Hey, I'm Todd from CNBC. We're here at Google where they just announced the new Pixel 4 phones and a bunch of other stuff. Let's go check it out. This is the Pixel 4 and this is the Pixel 4 XL, Google's new phones. I really like how they feel. They have a soft kind of matte back to them, almost like a rubbery texture, which is nice. And then the front has a new display with 90 hertz, which most people probably don't think matters, but it actually makes scrolling really nice and smooth. You might have noticed the back here, it looks a little bit like Apple's new cameras on the latest iPhones, but they focused on zoom lens instead of the ultra wide lenses. So you're actually moving in and they use software to capture all the details. So one of the features Google leaked ahead of time was astrophotography where you can take really good pictures at night, not just brightening the scene, but capturing like the Milky Way on a camping trip. But Google revealed here that it actually takes about four minutes to capture that picture. So you're gonna need some kind of tripod or prop it up against a rock, Google said, to get that picture. It's not as quite as simple as they led on to be. We didn't hear much about battery life, although they say it lasts all day. So we'll test that too. Now, one of the neat things that we haven't seen on any smartphone yet is a radar sensor on the front of the Pixel 4. That's what was called Project Soli before this. And that allows you to use gestures to move through the phone so if you wanted to skip songs and Spotify, that's one partner for this. Move through photos, I believe, was another one. Uh, you can silence an alarm. And Google says it's gonna add support um, from other apps and developers later. But right now, it's kind of just simple gestures by waving your hand over the phone, which seems unique, but I'm not sure. It might just be a gimmick at this point. I do like the form factor too. It feels pretty light. A lot of people when they felt the new iPhones this year said that they felt heavy. These don't feel heavy. They probably have smaller batteries and Google's been trying to manage battery life through software on the phone. So we'll see how long it lasts. But you do have a couple sacrifices. There's no headphone jack. This is the Pixelbook Go, which starts at $650. Actually feels more premium than I thought it would. They were talking about a rubber bottom, but it really feels more like a Ruffles potato chip on the bottom. And I like the keyboard, which is something we can't say very often about Apple's MacBooks these days. So I thought it would be kind of cheap given the price, but it feels like something I could type on. And I like the stereo speakers running along both sides. There's also USB-C charging on both sides, which is nice. Google said it's under two pounds, so it feels light. It feels like my MacBook Air a little bit. One thing though, unlike the regular Pixelbook, the screen doesn't go all the way back around, so it wouldn't double as a tablet. It stops right here. So the big thing with the Pixelbook Go is it runs Chrome OS, which is basically a big Chrome web browser computer that runs Android apps. I spend a lot of time in Chrome, but I also still need uh, full desktop apps, which aren't always available here. So I prefer things like the MacBook Air or a Surface Pro from Microsoft with full Windows, as opposed to a Chromebook, which really feels like kind of a beefed up web browser. My biggest fear with the Chromebook Go, though, is the price. It's $650, and I think most people buying Chromebooks are used to products that cost about $200 to $300. So I don't know if this is a competitor in the market, and it's one of the big questions I still have is, why is Google getting in the hardware space the way that Microsoft and Apple have been? Now, Google's been doing it for several years, but I don't know how many people are actually buying these products as they are the lower-cost Chromebooks or Android phones from other manufacturers. Google also announced its Pixel Buds, which are its second attempt at wireless headphones, and it now follows Apple, Amazon, Samsung, and Microsoft, who all announced similar products this year. The Pixel Buds slide into a case that can be used for charging. It uses USB-C, which is convenient. They look pretty promising, but we can't test them out today because they're not functioning. But Google plans to launch them later in 2020 for $179, which is competitive against similar products from Amazon, Apple, and other companies launching these. So one thing I'm really expecting here is that Google nails the translation aspect and voice recognition. Uh, the first Pixel Buds didn't do that very well, but they were promised to be really good at that. And also they didn't sound good. The charging case wasn't very nice. So if Google improves all of that, then I'd be really happy. So it has a lot of work to do, but I'm encouraged that it started from square one with the new design. This is the Nest Wi-Fi. Now you might have heard of mesh networking and that's where you put a bunch of Wi-Fi hotspots around your house that all talk to each other. This does that, but it also has a lot of the Google Home capabilities in it. So you can speak to Google Assistant and it doubles as a speaker. One thing you might like also is on the back, there's a mute switch, so it doesn't always have to be listening. So I've been using Google Wi-Fi, the older version of this, that doesn't have the speaker built in for several years, but the big question you want to ask yourself is whether you trust Google to have all the network traffic going across your house. I do, but some people might not. I also like how small it is. It's kind of like a soft little egg that you can put anywhere in your house. I guess it's a big egg, an emu egg. 
could also use it like an intercom system in your house. So you could announce that dinner's ready and all the other Nest Wi-Fi or Google Home speakers in your house will broadcast that message around your home. The big trend here is Google's taking its products like Google Wi-Fi and Google Home and bringing them all under the new Nest brand, which includes all of its in-home stuff. So now it's called Nest Wi-Fi and Nest Home as opposed to Google Wi-Fi and Google Home. Okay, so that's a quick look at the products Google announced today. One thing you'll notice is a real nice uniform design across its new products. Whether it was the Nest Wi-Fi, the new Pixel 4, or the Pixel Book Go, they all have a sort of same design language. One thing Google announced today that we didn't really go over too much is that a lot of these are using sustainable materials. So the Google Wi-Fi, for example, has mesh and plastics that are recycled from plastic bottles. It's a similar thing to what Apple's been doing by using recycled aluminum in some of its products and recycling its iPhones. One feature I'm really looking forward to trying is the astrophotography introduced in the Pixel 4. I want to take it out in the woods and see if I can get a picture of the Milky Way at night. That seems like a tall order, but we'll see if it works.